This video tutorial will look at the ratio analysis techniques for shareholder performance. On page 2 of the BOD3 paper, you'll find the formulas, and the two we're interested in are the last two, dividend per share, expressed in pence, and the dividend yield, which is always expressed as a percentage. It's actually quite rare for these to come up in an exam, so it'll be very obvious in the appendix or in the text if you're given the current market price for shares, and indeed the number of issued shares. Very rare if that information is given, it certainly suggests it's been put there for a reason, and you can calculate these ratios. So just to clarify some of the terminology here, so shares, profit and dividend, I'm going to use the example of a birthday cake. So here we have our cake, and essentially the size of the slice you have is your slice of ownership, if you like. It's your share of that cake. For a share in a business is, again, a piece of ownership. The more shares someone owns, the larger their stake in the business, or the cake, if you like, in that instance. So share is a piece of ownership of a business. Profit? Well, if you like, profit is what's on top of our cake. So if we put sprinkles on our chocolate cake, for example, that would be how many we've decided to put on. So for our profit, that would be how much the dividend we've actually decided to give away. So our chocolate sprinkles, in this case, are our profit. The business may decide to hold on to some of its profit, much in the same way as a baker might use chocolate sprinkles on part of a cake, but not all of it. So the total profit isn't the same as the total dividend. Some might be reinvested, some will be given that to shareholders. Now a key thing to think about is actually what our shareholders want. Do they actually want dividend? Well, in Buzz3 we're looking at quite large businesses. We're certainly looking at very large limited businesses. Very likely they're going to be public limited companies or they could be private limited. Key distinction is actually the shareholders in the business and what they might be looking for. So private limited company, an LTD, is very much owned by friends and family. Remember that's what makes it a private limited company, it's who we can sell shares to. So more like to be interested in making a long term commitment to the business. They might be happy to accept lower dividends and they're obviously going to be interested in growth investment. They're interested in the business and its well being. In the party, they're the people who come along, help you and clear up afterwards. So the ownership of a PLC is like to be very different. We still like to have the friends and family who started the business and invested, but now we're selling on the open stock market, so it's more like we'll have strangers investing in the business. Many of these will actually be other firms, particularly pension firms, who are actually looking to invest in the short term to make some money. Therefore, they want to capitalise on the moment. They're here for the good times. The company's making good profits and paying good dividends. They want to buy those shares. The share price will go up. They can sell them on for profit when times change. As soon as performance starts to drop off, they'll shift those shares and move on. They're certainly not interested in long-term investment and growth. So if you like coming to a party, to the people who'll break your house and then leave and not tidy up. So let's look to calculate these ratios. So first of all, dividend per share. It's really important if we're going to ask to calculate both of the ratios that we do this one first, as it will form part of the ratio that we're going to use to calculate dividend yield. So total dividend divided by the total number of ordinary issued shares. Now in this example, £4 million worth of dividend is being paid out from our £14 million operating profit. Obviously we don't know about tax. So we can assume that £10 million has been reinvested. Now the total number of issued ordinary shares is £25 million. Now as an aside, an ordinary share is one type of share. At A level, we don't need to know different types of share. However, there are other things such as preference shares, which will cost their extra and have other features to them. We're not too worried about that. So substituting numbers, we we'll therefore take 4 million and divide it by 25 million. You'll notice here if we move the zeros, again that just adds extra scope for making calculation errors, which could very much change our result. That comes out to 0.16 pound. Shares are always expressed in pence, so we're actually going to express that as 16 pence. So that means that shareholders receive 16p for each share they hold. If they have two shares, obviously it would be 32 pence of actual share payment. So what does this mean? Well, we can compare it to our retained profit. If we've got a high figure compared to retained profit, obviously a lot of money is being returned. It's attractive to short-term investors. Remember, for a PLC, it's more likely to be other firms who are looking for that short-term gain. A lower figure could still be attractive, as it does suggest the company's looking to invest and to grow. However, the concern would be that in the short term, that means that some of our investors won't be getting profits and dividends, so they may be more interested in selling their shares. If the share price is low, well that's not a problem, 
if we didn't pay very much for those shares in the first place, that we don't get a great return. Obviously, the smaller our piece of cake, the less we'd expect to get back on it, and the smaller the value of that cake. So let's think about dividend yield. So dividend yield is the percentage of the return that we actually get on that payment. Now, as mentioned, we're actually going to use on the top line of our equation a dividend per share that we've just calculated. So that was 16 pence. If you want to do it longhand, it's about 4 million pounds of dividend payment divided by the total number of shares, 25 million. So we're actually going to divide that by the current market price and multiply it by 100%. So in this case, a share in this business will cost you £6.36 or 636 pence. And you'll get 16p back on that share. Well, how does that equate? Well, 16 divided by 636 times 100% gives you 2.52%. So if for every pound's worth of share that you bought, you actually get 2 pence, 2.52 pence back, a 2.5% return. Does that mean? Well, let's have a look at it. So we might find that some shares are several pence, some of you several hundred pence. We can actually now put this into uh, some form of comparability to see how much percentage return we get. 2.5% doesn't seem very much, but the market rate of Similar firms is 1.5%, that's far better. So it's great in the interest rate, it might be worth investing. So for shareholders, they could put their money in the bank. It's at 5%, obviously that's far more attractive. 2.52% would not be a worthwhile investment, perhaps, unless there's other factors that business may be expecting far higher dividend payments in the future. Again, it may be acceptable if a company's retaining profit, it's harvesting its profit for future use, if that figure is lower. However, generally, as we said, PLCs are owned by other companies, and they actually want to see those short-term profits. So they're probably going to invest in companies with a larger shield. So that, in a nutshell, is your shareholders' ratio. Enjoy. <laughs>